Buonasera, we are day 12 of our wine quarantine. Tonight I'm going to take you to a different place of Italy. We are in the northeast. We're in an area that was baptized by the Romans as Valis Polis Celle. Although the vine, the Venus vinifer, arrived in this neck of the woods already in the 7th century BC thanks to the Etruscans, the highest moment of fame of the wines in this area was reached during the empire of Augustus, the first Roman emperor, and the wines were called the Reticum. So you probably already understood we're talking about Corvina. So we don't know if exactly the grape used at the time of the Roman wines, famous as Reticum, was actually called Corvina, but that being said, it is now the most important grape for the production of all the wines of the Valpolicella area. Now, Corvina is one of the so-called uve uccelline, or the bird's grape. The reason being, it's either because the skin of the grapes has the same dark coloration of the plumage of the bird, specifically the crow, or because the actual birds like to feed on this type of grapes. Interestingly enough and paradoxically enough, although the name refers to the dark skin of the berry, the wines made with Corvina, they're never going to be very dark black wine. That being said, Corvina in the vineyards is not an easy grape to work with because it's disease prone. So it's sensitive to too much humidity, it's sensitive to water stress, it's prone to sunburn, so really a pain in the butt, not an easy grape to work ultimately. But the most important claim of fame of Corvina is its fantastic adaptability to the appassimento. Appassimento, as you may know, it's the process of drying the grapes, which is so very popular in this area since 2000 years ago, the time of the Romans. Now, as far as trellising system, which is the way the vine is, is trained, the pergola veronese is the most common training system. Ultimately, before we go and taste and discover the wines, you know, Corvina is the most important grape, as I mentioned, in the Valpolicella area, which means with Corvina you produce, it's really the base of Valpolicella wines, Valpolicella Ripasso, Amarone, and the Reciotto della Valpolicella, which is the famous sweet wine still in existence. Tonight we're going to be tasting this wine by Andrea Sartori. This is a Colregolo, and basically this is a 100% Corvina-based wine that Andrea Sartori makes in the Valpolicella area. So now when you look at the color, again there's this beautiful, brilliant uh, uh, ruby color to it, a slight orange around the rim. Again, this is 2012 vintage wines, this wine that is eight years of age now, so also shows the, the beautiful potential. This wine does partial appassimento, meaning part of the grapes, about 60%, go through the appassimento, so it's not a full appassimento like an Amarone, but, you know, kind of on the way towards an Amarone. Now, put the nose in the glass, and immediately there is this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful marasca cherry. It's the classic maraschino cherry, very common in this area. It's very vibrant, uh, you know, maraschino cherry. And there's a beautiful herbal component, like a sweet herbal component. Balsamic notes come right through from, from behind it. And ultimately, a slight note of green bell pepper, which is still kind of a zippy and refreshing on the nose. Let's take a sip. The wine is round. Logically, the process of a passimento gives the wine this glycerin type of quality, which makes it very smooth, very round on the palate, but the tannins are there. So it's still a wine that has a nice, refreshing dryness, although the tannins are fine. So they're not extremely astringent, they're not extremely edgy, but rather they're very well incorporated in the wine that shows this beautiful, beautiful succulence and this beautiful suppleness. Ultimately, before I leave you, I will leave you with a very common saying in this area, although I'm not from Veneto, but I will read it in Venetian. L'homo pien de vin, el te parla anca in latin. With that being said, in alto i cuori, buonasera, until tomorrow, and be healthy. Ciao!